Ooh, you know it's gonna be good. You know it's gonna be good when the credits are like this. Yeah, this bombshell. Before you confess to your love, you must confess to yourself. And I know this feeling too, once you start going down this road, it just gets deeper. There's something about acknowledging it that just makes it all the more potent. It's kind of crazy. He's gonna love it. <laughs> Is he gonna love it? You're gonna love it? We're all gonna love it, if it really happens. You know what, that's not even totally wrong. It's not losing in the way they're implying it. It's like a loss of control. It's a vulnerability. It's so cute, they're having the same thought. Oh, a year ago? Wait, what? Did a confession already happen? Ooh, the struggles of early Miyuki. Chip on your shoulder, activated. This is the old student council president. He's a mad boy. <laughs> or he was a mad boy before he reformed his ways. It'll be a blue ass Miyuki. <laughs> hmm. No real impression at first. Yeah, it's not just the show. I just believe this is a thing in Japan where club is war. Club rooms are war. We need the perspective of you poors too. <laughs> is it me or is it a little bit patronizing? Miyuki is griping about this and talking about it as if it's beneath him, but obviously there's a big insecurity there. And in there is also going to be a desire. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's taking a little bit too far. Definitely got his hang-ups. Legend herself. And now you get to play grab-ass for a whole year in the student council room. I don't know how well Kaguya knows herself. It's a really huge change. He's just bringing so much into this that doesn't necessarily need to be there. Miyuki's going in. Miyuki is going in. Oh no. <laughs> no, he's going in anyway. Kaguya went in? Wow, interesting. Did not expect that. Oh, that's humiliating. How did Miyuki go from this to that? There you go, that's more like it. It's interesting that he said that. Huh. It's so interesting that their roles seem to have reversed. Like, Kaguya seems way more sure of herself here than she does in the present day. And Miyuki seems way less sure of himself, which I guess makes a certain degree of sense. Like, a lot of Kaguya's development has come with a kind of unraveling. There's just things she can no longer ignore, and it's it's melting her world, which puts her in a really uncomfortable place emotionally. I mean, sometimes growth happens smoothly and organically, you know, it's just you realize the next iteration of something that you're already kind of close to, indeed, or, or thought, or whatever. But sometimes it is forced upon you just by seeing things you can't unsee by circumstance. I feel like sometimes growth can feel like weakness in that way. It can be hard to know when you're in it. I think hindsight is sort of the, the telltale. Meanwhile, Miyuki seems to have gained conviction from this. It's like Kaguya was walking on a frozen lake thinking it was land, and Miyuki was adrift in the ocean not realizing he was just a couple meters from shore. I don't think it's the role that matters to Kaguya, but I'm sure Miyuki took that to heart. And present day. It's a long time in the making. The festival's finally starting. Kaguya's Culture Festival. 
Why do all the songs in this show sound so familiar? Of course, <laughs> best costume. And they made all of the money. All of the money. You have no idea what's in store for you. As I said, all the money. Who are these shady characters? Oh, are these the Ramen Brothers or whatever? <laughs> ramen Kings? Kagi's like, get out. <laughs> Just drink your coffee and leave. Sir, this is a Wendy's. <laughs> but instead of Wendy's, it's a student event. Don't you have tourists to take on extra long routes? How about you switch places with the outside? And again, the universe. Nice green screen effect. This reminds me of my dad. My dad is an avid musician, and he was never a coffee drinker, but then one day, like two years ago, he found out that Beethoven used to drink exactly X amount of coffee beans, and he wasn't satisfied with just being a normal person and <laughs> having that amount of coffee. He wanted to prepare it in the same way that Beethoven prepared it. So that meant grinding his own beans and using a Gregory Aschair-like coffee filtration device from medieval times to brew his coffee. And yeah, that's fine, you do you. But then he would judge me for using the pre-ground stuff, you know, the stuff that everyone uses, except for Beethoven. And I had to <laughs> wait for him <laughs> every morning to finish grinding his beans by hand with this pepper shaker-like device and then listening to <laughs> how much better it was. <laughs> it's like, can I just get my caffeine, please? Can I just have my caffeine and go back to what I was doing? Don't get sucked into their world, <laughs> Just Yuki thoughts totally abandoned. This episode took a very interesting turn. There he is. There he is. Forget the coffee. Forget it. Forget the green tea. No, put your ego aside. You don't need to win this battle. Tea montage. It's, it's thrilling. <laughs> I mean, I do respect these guys for at least having a passion, but can you have your passion elsewhere? <laughs> like, not at the student festival? Interrupting this confession? <laughs> I like how the tea revealed all that. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Now, just drink my love tea. All of it. Drink more. It's an underwhelming response after the last one. <laughs> Hopefully they'll pay it back somehow. No, but this is a Japanese high school student event, which means it's just all middle-aged men. <laughs> Including Daddy Shirogane, he's okay. He's allowed. Yu Ishigami's culture festival. Admittedly, like, I'm way more pumped for this, this confession. And I'm trying to figure out why. I think part of it is because I don't really expect a, a meaningful confession at this point in the show because the show would end. I don't think we're even going to get resolution this season because I know the, the manga extends past this season. So it's not the stakes of it that make Miyuki and Kaguya fun in this arc. It's more watching their growth and seeing them take risks that's that's fun and enjoyable and fulfilling. Yu Ishigami, on the other hand, he could succeed. <laughs> He could get absolutely obliterated, which is a risk for his character. So the stakes are a little bit higher. And also the fact that while neither of them feel this way, Miyuki and Kaguya are relatively evenly matched on the same level, at least the same class level. They're kind of peers. They complement each other well. This girl's her reach. <laughs> her Ishigami. Not that he isn't great. The ways it's a reach are, I guess, age, but also there are rough edges of himself that he hasn't refined yet. Like goodness and heart alone are kind of not enough when it comes to a partner, I think. There's a lot of great people, but I think 
what he's lacking is kind of a strength of character. At this point, it feels like the relationship would be something more for him and his benefit. His senpai, on the other hand, seems a little bit more rounded out as a person, a little bit more fleshed out, although, you know, I don't know for sure. And almost feels like it would be a little bit more of a, of a caretaker role than, you know, a, an equal role or a pure role. So he can get absolutely rejected into oblivion. Not that I think she would do that meanly, but there's just a lot going on and a lot of unknowns. She probably already knows. I feel like people know. You know what I mean? Oh no, Hurricane Maki. She's gonna sit this out. Yeah, she's gonna know. She's got a nose for trouble. <laughs> oh no, that got dark. <laughs> I like it. That's what makes it great. Usodaro. She, like, just lives her life in pain. I think it's so great that he's going for Tsubame, who is his reach. One way of looking at it is why would you go for anything else? I just think it's important to have measured expectations. And it's important to get something out of it, one way or the other. Oh, most fundamentally, you just have to make absolutely sure that you don't feel entitled to anything. And don't think that good qualities that you have identified in yourself make you deserving of someone else's love or commitment or energy or whatever. It's really hard to have perspective. Like, I struggle with this still, and I'm older than him, and I've had more experience than him. But big picture sure this is not about whether or not he dates Tsubami. That's how it feels to him, but it's about learning and practicing how to take risks and do the things he wants to do and go for the things he wants to go for. There have been times where I got rejected and felt oddly good about it. I think a common denominator in those situations was one, that I expressed myself honestly. You know, I said things I really wanted to say that felt good to say. It actually can feel really good to confess your feelings. Like, I feel like I've been in a place sometimes where just saying what I felt and having the opportunity to be vulnerable was a worthwhile experience in and of itself. And I think that resonates with people. And even if they are not interested, often there are positive things that come out of it. If it's done really right and purely, you know, if it doesn't contain sort of the, the seediness of demand or obligation or manipulation or trickery, gaminess or whatever, if it really is about the expression and actually commitment to wanting the best for you and the other person. I think that goes well most of the time. And there are a lot of great things that can come out of it personally too. You know, you took a risk and then witnessed yourself not dying, which is huge. <laughs> so hey, I, you know, that wasn't as bad as I thought. I survived it. What else can I do? You can get a weird adrenaline high from it. You can push that to an almost manic state, which is dangerous on its own. But And you never know. It might go well. You don't want to assume. Like, I think a lot of people glorify people they like and put them on a pedestal, but you'd be surprised. You know, people are human and people respond to attention. And and I think a lot of times just by approaching someone who is sort of adored in, in the manner Tsubame is adored, you immediately distinguish yourself because I think a lot of people are too intimidated to even try. I think everyone assumes that somebody better than you will do it, that she's out of your league, but you just don't know. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Right, right. It's not about Tsubame, it's about Shigami. And you will live in a world of pain and regret. I like how both Maki and Kaguya want to see Ishigami do it, just to believe. Hmm. What's going on? She's kind of weird. Yeah, this is sort of coming through lately. Yeah, although I feel like Kabadon is not the move for Tsubame. Oh no, that's the face of someone who's dying inside. Is that part of the attraction? <laughs> or is that an accident? Oh, detain people. What was the anime? I think it was school days where one of the events at the student festival was like five minutes in heaven room. That always stuck with me as being bizarre. Who supervises these things? <laughs> Possible. Yeah, it's actually solid, solid plan. Sad. Sad. And she gave him the idea. This is the moment. This is the moment. Yeah, that was actually a great push. Thank you, Hurricane Maki. I'll also say that in my experience, if you're in a moment like this, it's really critical you do it fast. Like the longer you put it off, the less likely it is that you do it. And like seconds matter. Like if you go to a party and you see a cute girl and you're, you're waiting for the right moment, 
Yeah, maybe it'll come up, but it probably won't. And now you've gotten in a rhythm of waiting. And that's hard to break. You haven't solved anything. I think the answer is just to get into the habit of going for it really quickly. Like without any planning, without any forethought, just walk up to them. Planned lines always sound stupid anyway, so you may as well sound stupid organically. It's like swimming in cold water. Everybody wants to go in slowly, but you're just delaying the pain and it sucks and it takes way longer. At a certain point, you figure out that the solution is just to jump in head first and like get acclimated. <laughs> Now I'm thinking about them as, as a match. Doesn't feel too bad. Doesn't feel wrong. Walk yourself into rejection proudly. She already knows. She knows. One thing that gives that away is that she's super relaxed. And I think when you're relaxed, you pick up on other people's emotional cues a lot better. She's got no stakes, really. She's fine either way. Would you like to get locked in the closet with me? Hey, look at that! It paid off! I mean, it paid off. Yeah, you got rewarded. Hell yeah. That's the hardest part. It's not over, but that's the hardest part. That was a promising start to the festival, even though it was another delay of the Kageyomiuki thing. But yeah, I think that's just gonna be how it goes. But my boy Ishikami Yu, <laughs> take it up. A big risk. History aside, heartbreak aside, fears aside, just going for the girl he likes, aiming at the stars, and doing well. It doesn't feel to me like this is gonna be a romance, but it doesn't really matter. It's just really satisfying seeing him fighting his fears, overcoming his fears, and going for something that he wants. And I think as long as he keeps it honest and respectful, and has a genuine regard for her and you know, not just what he wants from it. He can't go wrong in this interaction. I mean, it's not to say it won't be painful or, or can't be painful, but it's the kind of pain that is bittersweet. I don't know how to explain that. I've had really bad rejections and I've had, weird to say it, good rejections. And I think the difference was how I approached it. A bad rejection happens when I don't like who I was. A good rejection happens when I really put my best foot forward and it's, there's just no connection. It's not a match. I can walk away from that feeling pretty, pretty clear, pretty clean and Generally happy I tried, even if there's a little bit of embarrassment. And I think that's a principle that more broadly applies. You know, the moments of failure, you know, moments of things not going well or setbacks, they always contain some element of pain or sadness or whatever. But I think the severity of it and maybe more critically the duration of it and the the, the dirtiness or darkness of it or, or something like that will vary widely depending on how I acted rather than how it turned out. That's sort of the defining factor for me. You know, I can also say there are times when I got what I wanted and felt terrible for that same reason. It's like, oh man, was that worth it? Who am I? Why did I behave in that manner? There are ways you can be successful and still end up hating yourself, but there's something about this that feels good. It feels like Ishigami making huge steps in facing the world and trying to be better and trying to be stronger. And like, there's almost no doubt in my mind this is gonna be a positive experience for him ultimately. Mm -hmm.